and worshipped them. Very few headless corpses were found at the Jiahu site. Perhaps this person had been a tribal chieftain. If so, he would have possessed more knowledge than any of his peers, and he would have held a number of important positions. He would have led his people on hunts and well-digging projects, been responsible for medical treatment and education, presided over rites on important occasions, asked questions bearing on the fate of the tribe through divination, and he would have led prayers to the gods. This being the case, one could be certain that somewhere in all of this, the bone tubes played an important role. In 1986, a millstone with legs was unearthed along with stone pestles from graves in the bottom layer of the Jiahu site. A number of such millstones had been discovered at Peiligang. The people at that time had already learned to use millstones to husk and grind grain, and they were important tools in agricultural production. The millstones unearthed at Jiahu and Peiligang were similar in both shape and materials. Had these two societies been in communication? Did one learn from the other? Far fewer agricultural tools were found at the Jiahu site than at Peiligang, but far more hunting and fishing tools were found at Jiahu, and this fitted the profile of an early Neolithic Age site. In general, primitive societies developed from hunting and fishing economies to agricultural economies. To Zhang Jujong, it was evident that Jiahu society was considerably more primitive than that at Peiligang. For one thing, millet had been grown at Peiligang, indicating a relatively high level of agricultural sophistication. So, what crops did the people of Jiahu grow? By 1987, excavations at the Jiahu site had grown to include four sections, the eastern, central, western and northwestern sections. From the layout, it was evident that very few graves had been placed near the living quarters. The foundations of the homes clearly revealed that most of the houses were single family dwellings inhabited by four or five people, and many of the houses had a cooking platform. Many of the houses had a layer of red baked clay in the foundation. This was probably put there to prevent dampness. To everyone's surprise, an important discovery was made in these seemingly unimportant lumps of red baked clay. In the course of cleaning up the artifacts in the laboratory, the archaeologists discovered that many pieces of red baked clay bore marks or pits about the size of grains of rice. From the plant and animal remains found there and the micromorphological analysis of the soil, they knew that the climate in the area when Jiahu culture flourished was warm and moist, very similar to the present day climate in the middle and lower reaches of the Yangtze River. The climate was thus very suitable for growing rice. The archaeologists took several pieces of this clay to the Institute of Botany at the Chinese Academy of Sciences. There, experts confirmed that the marks were indeed from ancient cultivated rice, and they actually extracted carbonized grains of rice from within the baked clay. It turned out that the grains of rice were similar to both the round grain rice grown in North China and long grain rice grown in the south of China today. They were in fact the earliest evidence yet found of rice growing in the Yellow River Valley. What else did the ancient people of Jiahu eat? When Zhang Zhujong was working through an ash pit, he discovered wild fruit pits and the bones of fish and deer. There was even the lower jawbone of a Chinese alligator. These discoveries show that the people of Jiahu had a varied diet, 
with a good balance of meat and vegetables. They even enjoyed fresh fruit. However, they weren't satisfied with this, and to ensure a steady supply of meat, they may well have begun to experiment with domesticating animals. Many broken bones were found among the remains, and most of them were from domesticated pigs. This discovery proved that raising pigs had already become a part of daily life, and that pigs were an important source of food. The pig bones had been scattered about casually, but when the archaeologists explored pits T101 and 102, they discovered that dogs received very different treatment. They were buried in graves of their own. Ghosh是因为都知道中国这个狗是人类的朋友,打猎什么东西,猎狗之类的。这个活着的时候给人这个帮助人打猎,给人看家回来,这狗死了,还有埋在那个墓地里边。哎,门口埋的也有。哎,
Near their spacious homes, the tribe planted crops. Gentle breezes wafted the fragrant smell of ripening grain in all directions. The people of Jahu caught fish and turtles in the nearby lake, and occasionally a red-crested heron or a wild swan would dance before them. After a hard day's work, the men would return home and eat a hearty meal prepared by their wives. And they often enjoyed a glass of homemade rice wine with their meal. As night fell, the people would congregate around a bonfire in the open space in the middle of the village, dressed in their finest clothes. There, they would pray to their gods and listen to the predictions of their tribal leader. This is the picture of the warm and harmonious society that regularly appeared in Zhang Zhujong's mind. However, deep in his heart, he still felt something was missing. He couldn't stop thinking about the tubes made of bone. He knew he wouldn't be able to set his mind to rest as long as questions remained unanswered. What the finds at Jiahu showed was that the region was inhabited as early as the Neolithic Age. The remains of houses, kilns, pottery, turquoise carvings, stone tools and bone tubes indicated a flourishing and relatively sophisticated social organization. Moreover, no traces had been found previously of rice cultivation so long ago in such a northerly area. And the evidence that the ancient Jiahu people may have enjoyed the pleasures of wine 9,000 years ago suggested that the Chinese were the first people in the world to enjoy a tipple. But still, there was one question that Zhang Zhujong was desperate to answer. What were the burn tubes? To find out, please join us for the next edition of our program. And thank you for staying with us on today's New Frontiers. I'm Ji Xiaojun on CCTV International. Bye for now.